My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. I remember Jesus some years ago, I was with some college guys. We went to the mountains to a camping trip. And one of the nights around the bonfire, we had a conversation under the stars, a fitting place to talk about everything. Everybody was open to any question, and, uh, and it was quite an atmosphere of uh, sincerity and camaraderie. And one of the guys broke the ice in the beginning of the conversation, saying something like, Hey guys, what would you change if you were to know that you are going to die, say, in a week? And I remember everybody was kind of uh, throwing ideas, and one of the guys in a very sincere way, in a very genuine way, after thinking a little bit, he said, I don't think I would change anything. I would just keep doing the things that I'm doing. And, uh, and I remember that answer because it struck me. It, it was kind of a very deep, very simple. And this is the realization that people that live in the presence of God kind of have. Today, Jesus, in the Gospel, you are asked about the resurrection. Is this true, this thing of the resurrection? And then the Sadducees that didn't believe in, in the resurrection of the bodies put you to the test, asking about a woman that is married, but uh, the husband dies, and then she remarries several times. And the Sadducees ask Jesus, what about in the resurrection? What would happen there? And Jesus says that the Moses, in the passage about the bush, called the Lord, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he is not God of the dead, but of the living. For to him all are alive. And I would say, Jesus, that uh, we are alive not only after the resurrection, but right now. This is the beauty of a being Catholic that there is a creation that continues in this present moment, and it will never end if we get to heaven. How inspiring is, how encouraging is, to think that I don't need to wait, that I can be happy right now, that to be happy to meet you is not an option for the future, it's something that I am starting now, Right now, when I pray, when I talk to you, I am the center of the universe. And I'm not saying this in a vanity sense of self-centeredness, but I am the center of the universe because God is paying attention to my prayer. And many times, my Lord, I need to get out of this mentality of the tomb, like the Sadducees, a flat mentality that can affect my personality. Pope Francis, in one of his homilies this year during Easter, said that uh, often we are blocked or blocked our hope by the stone of discouragement. And we end up in a kind of a dissatisfaction in a, what he calls the psychology of the sepulchre. Or better to say, the psychology of the dead. And this is not... Christian is not Catholic. Our Lord is alive. The witness of the resurrection is not something that happened back in the centuries, but is right now we are witnessing the same thing. That no matter what kind of rock do you have in your heart, the weight, the size, or whatever, our Lord can move that. Jesus, you can move whatever. And this is what gives me hope. It could be something very personal, some resentment, some discouragement. It could be something more objective in reality, something that is affecting the world, the church. But no matter how big the rock is, 
with your power, Jesus, with your resurrection, you can move forward, the church and my soul. And again, I don't need to wait till later. I can live in this present moment with the fullness of joy. Speaking about living the present moment, I remember when I was in college, I used to be the coach for a soccer team. They were pretty bad, to be honest, but it was a lot of fun. And it was a very united team. One of the kids, his name is Danny, um, didn't have a leg. He had cancer, very young age, and he had one of those uh, plastic, like uh, artificial legs. And uh, he would play with us. He had long pants, but uh, he was so funny. He didn't think about himself. And I remember the team was so bad that sometimes Danny would ask me, "Hey, can I can I do the trick?" And the trick was that when we were down like 5-0 or something like that, I would make a sign to him, and then he would kick the ball, throwing his leg on the air, and screaming like crazy, even if he didn't feel any pain. And the other team was shocked immediately. Everybody was paralyzed. And my guys knew the trick, and then they would take the ball and score in the midst of a joy and a celebration, just because Danny would make the show for them. And it was just 5-1, so no, no big deal. It was not cheating, I guess. But I, I realized that this guy lived in the present moment with joy. Sometimes we, I need to wait for something to happen in order to make me happy, Jesus. And this is not Christian, I guess. If I really believe in you, you are alive and you, you're giving me life right now. And the life that you are giving me is not like a leftover of energy or whatever. It's not just a random life, a kind of neutral or indifferent life. It's a life that has the mark of love. It's an opportunity. So help me, my Lord, to embrace my life, to embrace the present moment, and to take it as, a, as an opportunity to grow, to love, to discover something new. The Pope continues in one of those homilies, and then he says, I have a question for you. Where is your treasure? Where does your heart rest? In what treasure does your heart rest? Because that treasure will define your life. End of the quote. That treasure will define who you are. Your dreams make you as a person. And you have a reason to dream. You have a reason to believe. That God loves you right now. And I don't need to wait the better times or to an opportunity. is right now in front of me in my hands, Jesus. Help me to understand this well. Help me to take my life as a gift. And especially during this month, Jesus, help me to think big about the church. There is a church in heaven, the church in purgatory, the church in, in earth, on earth. And it's the same church, we're united. I'm accompanied by a living church, by a living community. Many times when I think about the Blessed Virgin Mary, for example, I imagine her alive, of course. And uh, when, when I read about her apparitions in Lourdes, Guadalupe, Fatima, I see myself in front of Mary and I think, Mary wants to be in this world. She cannot wait. She is in heaven, and I imagine kind of a discussion with God the Father and the Holy Spirit and Jesus saying, I want to go. I need to see my children. And maybe God the Father says, well, they have the sacraments, they have a lot of means to, to survive. And Mary says, no, but I need to be there. Meaning, I'm alive here, but I want to be with them. This is the power of the church. This is the same connection that we feel in our families, we experience in our communities, but in a wider, in a higher, in a deeper way. With the Blessed Trinity alive. With Mary and Joseph alive. With all the saints that we venerate alive. With millions of saints in purgatory waiting to get to heaven. With the angels. My Lord, I have a lot of reasons to believe. I have a lot of reasons to be happy. Right now, I don't need to wait. I am part of a family that is alive. And it's very, very, very powerful idea to get like to this shelter, to this refuge, 
which is the community of the saints, and especially in this month of the death. The death according to this world, but the saints alive according to God, according to the Catholic Church. My mother, if sometimes I get discouraged, help me to raise my eyes to heaven with my imagination, with my memory, with my heart, to connect with the company of the saints awaiting for me, to connect with you, to connect with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.